Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas. Delighted to be joined in the matchroom headquarters by Mr. Nigel Ben. How are you, sir? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Very well, very well. A long journey for me to get to Brentwood today, but yeah, all worth it, of course. All worth it, of course. Because you just told me the journey, that's why I'm giving you the interview. <laughs> if I live next door, you would tell me to, to get out. Yeah. Um, one thing I have to say, how good am I at making coffee out of 10? It's actually lovely. Yeah. I only wanted a little. I only wanted a little shot, but you gave me a lot of pint. But I'll do with that. If you need him waking up, I see you dozing off. Um, Connor, Connor, Nigel, rather. Um, about five days since Connor's amazing win over Chris Algieri. I just want to start by asking you what the response has been like, because obviously you spent a lot of time in Australia away from from Connor's career. You would have seen the response, perhaps online and virtually, um, but seeing it in person, being here and in the flesh, what's the response been like the last few days? I think, yeah, Oscar, it's, it's really been, um, uh, I don't know, what I, it's like I'm watching my little boy just grow up quick, man, really quick, and watching him, you know, putting a, making sure every I is dotted and every T is crossed, he's just doing everything, and for the first time in his whole career, I was not worried about the fight, I was not worried whatsoever, because I've, I've been here for nearly three months. Watching him get up at five, me as well, um, sometimes up before the alarm even gone off, and watching him train hard, doing 12 four-minute rounds, not three-minute rounds, 12 four-minute rounds with 30 seconds rest with these big guys that he flew in from um, France to spar with, like middleweights and um, some English fighters, good fighters. And seeing Conor doing like, you know, having a field day, enjoying himself, learning his trade. And um, I was not worried at all. In the way that he's training now, see, now that I've seen this, it's like me saying, okay, right. Okay, yeah, I see you. I know what your, cap your capabilities are now. I'd frame him with any of the world champions, even now. Might get beat, but he'll learn from that. Like, it's going to come a time where he's going to... Well, he's not even out of first gear yet. He's not been challenged yet. And he's already just not, not, knocked out. Not just stopped, knocked out a former world champion who fought um, Spence, who Spence put down with a body shot, but Connor actually knocked him out cold. And um, so I, I, I think in, in Connor will even out of first gear. Still doing what, he, what, what, what I know his capabilities are. And after watching the training... How we do? I would put him in with Terence Crawford. They don't think, yeah, but it's early. I don't care. I'd throw him in there. Go on, have a go. That's what I would do. I wouldn't really worry about it. Have a go. Let's see where you are. I'd throw him in with Ugas, the WBA champion, straight away. It's interesting that you say, obviously, he's going to face adversity in his career. Um, it's interesting that you say, throw him in. He might lose, so what? Obviously, having you as a father and someone to look up to, is it kind of something you've instilled in him that there will be adversity and you've got to take it on the chin? Because look, the modern day fighter that O is so important. Connor's still got his O. Um, you didn't retire with your O yet. You're still considered one of British boxing's legends. Is it something you've instilled in him that's like, look, even if there is a loss, who cares? We, we, me and Vic were talking yesterday. Vic had a, a different attitude to me. She said, I said, you know, Connor's going to lose. She said, I, I can't, I can't program that in my head. I, I, don't, I don't see that. I can't program that in their head. And, you know, and she said, I, I just don't see that, which is a good thing. But with me, I said, like, you know, I'll just, you know, face reality that he will lose. But it's how he comes back. But there again, I say the way that he trains, oh, my gosh, is another thing. So what she was saying is what, how he trains. He's like a machine. Oh, my gosh, he's like a machine. I've never, if I look at our training levels, me at my peak at 20, 27, 28, me at my peak, I'm here. Connor's already here with his training methods. We never had no strength and conditioning. We never had dietitians. We didn't know about twitch fibers. What the hell is all that all about? He knows all about it. Some of the things that he does is just like mind-blowing, mind-blowing. You know, after, after a training session, I mostly just go, out, go and see a friend. Connor goes home, gets back in the bed relaxes and watch TV or goes to sleep. So he, he's training methods so, so different to, compared to mine. It's interesting that you said you have sort of 
done it alongside Connor in these last couple of months as well. Obviously, you know, you keep yourself in good shape. We can see that. But the fact that he's got this militant routine, yeah. what's it been like for you? I can imagine good the fact that one, you're doing it with your son and two, the fact that, I oh, know, just to be over here and be training yourself because you're doing that alongside him. So that must be like something that uh, when you were a young father, you dreamed of, I suppose. Well, it's so funny because like, I was in the military anyway. So, so that weren't, that weren't, that weren't a problem with getting up. Bang. We said like, get up at this time. I was up. I'm thinking, oh, what get up now that I've, I get up now, now that he's finished, I still get up at 5.30 and go down the gym. So I still, I still got that, because now I'm, I'm programmed like him now. If I get up at, like, I have him, oh, mate, oh, day's, day's gone. You know, so, we, we, so it's nice to be in, even like Connor after the fight, Monday, what's he doing? Running with Tony. I'm in the gym, he's running with Tony. So we're, we're, we're programmed that way, me and Connor, and that's what I love about him. I ain't got worried about his training not being fit. He's, he's, he's actually gone up another level, and his next fight, he will go up a level again. So I'm, I'm not really worried about, like, you know, his fitness level, but he's learning on the trade. Each fight, when they say, oh, oh it's going to be a tough fight, this is going to be that. With Vargas, with Granadas, with Formella, now with um, uh, Algeri, Algeri, they're all these, all these levels that meant have gone out in kind of hard fight. Kind of proves what he's worth. He's not even at first gear. And I can't wait till he goes into third and fourth gear and, and knowing that he can still do this in round 10. Well, I think the general public can't wait to see what Connor's bringing. As every fight's come on, there's sort of more positivity, more, more hype around Connor. Um, I just want to talk about your relationship with Tony because obviously I've been listening to Connor do some of the Zoom interviews and whatnot and the way he talks about Tony um, and the way you talk about Tony, I love that sort of close knit you and obviously you, I think it was Connor's mum knew Tony before you did. Yeah. So this isn't just a journey that's, Connor, I'm going to hand you my son um, do the business and let's see where we go. This is, this is more than that. It's a lot more than that. Well, it's much more than that. You used to rave together is what yeah, Tony would tell me. You used to yeah, rave it up, yeah. Me and Tony, we used to have it large and he'd come back to my house and all that. So we'd hang out a lot, me and Tony and his brother Peter. And um, yeah, we were just like, you know, party animals. But like, you know, I, I just know Tony for a long time. And we used to spar like match room, me and Tony. We used to spar and we weren't pulling no punches. But yeah, so we built a relationship and a friendship and you know and it was so funny, it's just so funny how Connor was down uh, with Ricky Hatton. Then all of a sudden uh, we don't know how it come about. I managed to get Tony's number because after I, I cut away from everybody else, um, when my life changed. And then yeah, I got hold of Tony. I told him like, come and train my boy. And when I kinda had his first fight under Tony he was slapping like that in the fight, and I thought, oh my gosh, oh, Connor. I didn't see no no potential whatsoever. I thought, oh, this is like, you know, he's got the Ben name, but he ain't got the Ben rep. And then Tony just kind of like, you know, because I didn't realise what my son's capability, and he's just grown, he's just, oh, just he's, he's rich. In maximum height, I, I could not be, believe that he'd be in this position now. But it's all down to Tony, nothing, nobody else. I actually thought Tony weren't right for him. I've actually told Tony this. And now, I could not see Connor with anybody else but Tony. That's how much confidence I have in Tony. And he's a peaceful man in the corner. Peaceful man. But, it, but it'll, you know, if he has to get out of his prime, he can. But what a great trainer, especially for my son. Yeah, he kind of, like I said to Charlie, he's the most laid-back geezer I know. And with Connor being really intense, I, I did want to sort of know how the corner is worked. But he said it's, it's, it's calm, but it's informative. It's yeah, informative. Yeah, it, well, what I like about Tony, you know, it don't really get irated too much. But it did when he thought, um, oh, who's the guy, that he, the French guy? Paynard. Oh, Paynard. Yeah, yeah we're, we're Tony. said, look, you're not moving to it, but... But it was like, you know, letting him know, you're not doing good, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And from that time, Connor's just just grown everything. He didn't even, even in the, the uh, Algeria fight, Tony was just so peaceful, just so calm. 
bring that calming influence around him. And so, you know, when you, when you watch that, it bring the whole team. It, was, it never, it never uh, uh, flapped or anything. It just kept everything calm. And then Conor went out there and done what he had to do. And I've been watching him in the gym. Mm. That's why I knew Conor was going to... I didn't have no fear because I've seen what they do in the gym. Mm. I know Conor, and he's told me this many times, he always had the belief, even at the start of his career, when people were writing him off. And I know Eddie said in the back of his head, oh, I didn't believe he could win a British title. Um, so I know Conor's always had that belief about him, even if other people didn't. But when you said you saw him and you thought, oh, he's got the name, but not the sort of the rep and the ability. What do you think from then? Let's say he hadn't carried on this journey. Where would Conor have been in life, do you think? Did he ever give you any other inkling that there was another path, potentially? Nothing. What it is... We have the instinct in us. Even though, even my other kids, uh, they have something in, that's installed in them that they've got that belief in them. All of them, all of my kids have got that belief. But, you know, they've got to step out on that. They've, they've got that. And Connor, I don't know if I can speak for Connor at this present moment, Connor's stepped out on that, on that belief that he has. I mean, being honest with you, what I had, I think Conor's got tenfold. What I mean like that, I had that real aggression, but I didn't have the boxing ability that Conor's got. Or maybe I wasn't taught like how Conor was taught. Because Conor's like, you know, a, a, a finely tuned mach machine, absolutely finely tuned, you know, so he, he's got that belief to go all the way. In terms of your relationship as outside of being a father-son relationship, um, I know when I spoke to you after the fight and you were walking back to the hotel, you said, I'm Connor's Joey. You were carrying his uh, trunks and his ring yeah, walk suit. Well, yeah, you, it was me. Everyone was laughing at that, was carrying all these bags. I felt so bad. I had to get the content, but I wanted to help you out. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I felt bad. But you know what it is? It's something that, see, now you've got to understand, when I became born again, my whole whole attitude changed. I'm worried, be like, if you, you carry your own bloody bags. Who do you think I am? But you don't. You don't. You just think, oh, well done, son. You're done good, mate. I carry your bags. No, it's my son. And he's doing well. You just, you just, you, you humble yourself. It's not about that. Because at the moment, he's in that same position I was. <laughs> do you understand? I've done, I've had, I've had everybody doing everything for me. You know, even my dad used to do it. So it's so funny. So it's like, you know, and I'm doing it for my son. I do it with pleasure. You know what I mean? But not too much am I doing that too much. Because someone told me, you, so I said, look at me, you, you're right, Joe, you're carrying all this stuff, but you know what, you're laughing for you. Yeah, I ain't doing that no more, but, but it's, it's all good, mate. It's all good. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, and I know, obviously, you made it clear, you don't see it like that, but a lot of people probably would have seen that clip and gone, um, it would be, or think it would be easy for you to not get above your station, because it'd be easy for you to go, I am Nigel Ben. I know you don't think like that to go, I am Nigel Ben. I don't care if you're my son and you're doing this. Someone is going to carry it. The security can carry it. Yeah. it like, can you see why people would think it'd be easy for you to just go, I ain't doing that? No, no but it's, it's, yeah, well, then, that, then that, that's pride. God told you to humble yourself under his mighty hand. And at the end of the day, you know, I humble myself. It's not only that. I don't, I don't look at him. You know, my, my son's on, a, a, on cloud nine at the moment. Even when... Even in the morning, what was I doing? It's so funny, I'm going to tell you this as well. He told me not to drive down there, so I gave my, I, I was in um, Bristol, so I got my agent saying, look, Connor said, no, Dad, Dad, come with me, come with me, just let Mark take the car, get the train over. So I got the train over from Bristol, it took me about three or four hours to get over to, to Liverpool. So... And the same thing you saw on a, on, on, uh, on a Saturday night carrying all these bags. Then, Sunday morning, I'm carrying all these bags again. But this time I've got two, two world title belts and all these bags. And I packed them in the back of his Range Rover that he come with his, uh, his agent with and all that. And he said, ah, oh, Dad, we got no room to drive you back. Yeah, the cheek no, of it, no, the listen. front of it. Excuse my French. He's a bloody twat, right? So then I had to go into my, my nephew's car and drove all this. So it was like, you know, it's like, it's like he made me drive all the way there, all the, way, got all the, uh, the train from Bristol, 
all the way over to there and tell me, yeah, come back with me. Then we, we, we can go, we go and pick up my new car because we're going to pick up his new car. It's S, um, it's S class 63. I thought, yeah, I'll go down there. And then I put all the, packed all the back of the Range Rover. He said, Dad, you can't, we've got no room. You have to go in the other car. I thought, thank you, son. Yeah, love you. So, you know. I just humbled myself and I was like, oh, sting was coming at me everywhere. But you know what I mean? But you just do that though. That's your son. Connor, ain't careful. There's going to be a fight that you really don't want on his hand. Um, obviously, it's great to hear them stories. And it was such a good night, Saturday night, for, for Connor and the team. But you know what boxing fans are like. So impatient. People are still watching that knockout. But the next thing is like, um, you're going to announce who you're fighting already? It's, it's, it's constant, is it? Is it Broner? Is it Khan? People will throw names out because um, we do. We do all want to know in terms of fans well, who he will fight. Well, but well, 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 what they were saying is that they're talking about Abinissi, and then I read in the paper this day, um, today, about Chris Chris Bank Chris Eubanks Jr. talking about where did that come from? Where did that come from? It, you know, you look at it. I really wanted it to die with with me and Chris, but it seems like you know someone. Um, uh, um, the, the German promoter can't make song. Oh, Carlos Sauland. Sauland. or whatever. Yeah, that, you know, talking about like, you know, this fight should be made. I think because Connor's doing well, you know, everybody's now then jumping on the bandwagon. Then you've got like people like Abinissian. Who really needs Abinissian? Abinissian needs to be fighting for a world title. And if Connor, and he's got a world title, then Connor fight him. But he, so I, I, I rate Abinissian, but he should, he should, He's fighting all these kind of British mediocre fighters. I'm sorry to say, I mean he should be he should be fighting for the world title now, not fighting all these British fighters that he know that he 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 can be easy. He needs to be on the world stage and fighting for a world title. I think fighting world title before Connor. That's how good I think he is. But that's where he should be, not fighting all these mediocre British fighters. And now they're looking at the jump on Connor's bandwagon. Connor's got his own path, and I know where Connor's going. But if he's got a world title fight, then fight Abinissian. Could be fighting Ugas. You know, Con these guys have been around much longer than Connor. I think some of them have been, you know, pro before before Connor would even thought about turning pro. You know, and like you know, these guys like you know um, Abinissian. I don't really 35, 30, You know, he should be world champion now. And Connor's, Connor's making his own path, and he will he will get there. Connor will get there, you know. But I mean, like they're looking at Broner, and uh, I'd like him to fight Ugas. Tell you the truth. Yeah, I mean, you said to me you believe he does what he done to Algeria to to Ugas. I just want to reference something Eddie said. He said there's two levels between Algeria and a world title. I just want you to kind of tell me what you think them them two levels are. Well, I, I, honestly, I think like you know, well, me me personally, I I. I'd throw Connor with, with, with Terence and Spence. I'd throw him in. Mean, I wouldn't care. Because one day it will come that he will lose. And I hope that if he does lose, he loses against the world champion. That's it. I, you know, there, 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 there's levels and there's levels. But because I've seen Connor, how Connor trains, he's not going to lose on fitness. So that's the only thing you worry about. Oh, has he got the gas? Has he got the wind? Has he got that? He's got all the technology, uh, uh, the techniques, sorry, to, to, to fight for a world title. And he's proven this in the last fight. Nobody ain't done that to Algeri. Sparked him in four rounds. And I mean, when he, uh, Spence stopped him, that was a body shot. Connor knocked him out clean. So I think, like, you know, and that's a former world champion. You know, all right, might, might, his best days might be behind him, but I still think if Connor caught him, the same thing would happen. Obviously, like I said, I, I don't want to ask too much about what's next because it's the sort of you question can. that Connor and, and you are going to get. Well, yeah. well what, all right, fine. What do you want right now? If you could pick one fight, one location, and, you know, for the first third of the year, let's say Connor fights three times next year, one fight, one location, what would be your preference as we sit here, Nigel? I would like him to fight um, Broner, and then I would like him to fight Ugas next. Yeah. The, the, Broner in the States or Broner over here? Wherever, mate. Wherever they, they don't really. I mean, I won both of my world titles, one in Italy and one in America. It's not about that. It's about, you know, you going out there and doing what you can do. And going and fighting in America, like, you know, he's saying, I'm coming on your own turf to get that belt. I'm coming on your own turf to do that. 
And I think Conor can do that. And I think, you know, it gives you much more energy going to fight in uh, someone's back backyard. Well, we know, uh, I think it was the post-fight press conference when they were talking about Broner, and we know Broner's personality and what he's like. Um, he's not very personable at times, but... Uh, no. He would give it to Conor, and Conor would give it back. Would that be sort of a new experience for Conor? Because he's never really had someone look at him and stick it on him in oh. terms of that. We know Conor's intense, but he's never had someone look at him and go, "You know what? Fuck you." He's never had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I think that. I, I think once, uh, once that kicks off, then that that, that will be never that stop. Would, that, that that would like the the litmus paper, uh, paper, and that would, that would be it, mate. It'd be be well away, and I know. Con and it's so funny with Conor; he'd just be focused anyway. Because he, he doesn't need someone to light the fuse to get Conor to train hard. When he fought like Al Jiri, he didn't have to, he didn't have to lit the fuse. It was really nice and everything. I just think like Conor just go through the same same method of training and tell him bring him down anyway. Tell him what tell him what let, let Conor get a, get a hand with you know with, with anger and all that. I think you know Conor 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 rise to it. He'll rise to that. I can assure you. And I'll be in his corner anyway. <laughs> um, just finally, from me, I spoke to you after the fight, and the last thing I said... Like a, a two-minute interview. About and I'm watching the clock go and thinking, how long before he tells me to stop? No, um, no, you're good, buddy, you're good. After the fight, when I spoke to you, you said, my last question was, how have you seen his sort of superstardom develop? And you said to me, superstar's a very dangerous word, which it is. It can be used, perhaps out of term, too early for some people. But... Um, you must have seen that sort of exponential growth in Connor's um, profile in in the recent years. Yeah, well, you know what it is. It's like I I don't really because I've already been there. It's like you know, it's nothing. It really doesn't superstar them or whatever. You know what? Go and do it in a ring, mate. That's it. it You've experienced it. It's know, a different year. It, it doesn't it doesn't really bother me, mate. You know what? It is? It's just good that he's got the British public behind him. That's all it is, really. In a nutshell, when you got the British public, I mean, you're on cloud nine. I mean, when I had the British public behind me, I don't care about anything else. I did not care. When you got the British cheering, I mean, it's crazy. Like when I fought Eubanks at uh, Old Trafford and all like chanting my name before I even got out of there. Oh my gosh, what a feeling. I could not, a lot of the fights that I won, I won because of the British public behind me. So, superstardom, I, you know, it. You're only as good as what the British public want. That's it. I can't say I'm a superstar. I let the British public tell me that. That that's it in a nutshell. So when you say, "Oh, you're a superstar," I'm like, oh, "No, Connor's not there yet, mate. He's not. He's not there." It, I just wanted the the, uh, the British public to continue to follow him. That, that's all I would say. It's just like you know, when you've got the British behind you, I mean, ah, oh, what a feeling! What a feeling! No, nothing better. Nothing better than that. Nigel, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for, for giving me some of your time. Congratulations to you and the, and the team once again, and Connor, of course, and um, I cannot wait to see what is next. I can't wait either, mate, but I want to go home to my family, mate. Three months have been away. Yeah.